Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Very well. So welcome everybody. I'm very glad to announce today's uh, guest, uh, Thomas Mace Archer Mills. Is that correct, Thomas? Yeah, that is correct. Ciao. Okay. Okay, so uh, welcome, and uh, we are here for a very um, uh, cool occasion because um, we are um, uh, soon the uh, your new book, The Adventures of Little Queen Lilibet, A Royal Day Out, uh, is scheduled for February the sixth, and is a book for uh, children. And uh, we are very excited because, of course, uh, you have this awesome uh, collaboration with uh, author uh, Stella Nosella and illustrator uh, Valentina uh, Vanasia. How excited are you about this book, Thomas? It, we're very excited about this book, and I really could not stress enough the help that Valentina has given with bringing this to life and having such fantastic illustrations of uh, little Queen Elizabeth when she was just a princess. And Stella Nocella, who is very well known here in Italy mm -hmm. with her Sebastian's Chronicle series and all the charity books that she writes here, uh, we've been friends for a long time. And this idea just came up and we said, let's act on it. Let's, let's do something. Let's educate people. So mm -hmm. took to awesome. outlets we know how, which is education and writing. <laughs> yeah, because the book uh, has already been published in, in Italy and it's already extremely successful because the timing was great. Well, you were able to publish the book in Italy uh, before Christmas. Is that right? Yes, yes. Uh, we put it out the 21st of December. Mm -hmm. And uh, we scheduled the this fantastic tour that I'm on in now in Italy, mm -hmm. and uh, we've sold out of all the books. It's on its wow. second thing here in Italy. Mm -hmm. So I just ended up today in Venice to undertake some things for the book, and tomorrow I'll be doing Lucky more. you, Venice. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm confined welcome. here in Staten Island, New York. Uh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> Maybe I can get a gondolier to row me over. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's awesome! It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's impossible to define the beauty of, of Venice and uh, mm -hmm. and the magic <laughs> feeling of it. Yeah. <laughs> Breathtaking. Rome was a success. Florence was a success. Venezia was is is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Fantastic children uh, along the way, and I say the children bring their parents. <laughs> a children's world and uh -huh. what we've done with this book is not only appeal to young readers but those that like to be read to mm. and their parents we've had some adults come to our workshops and the readings uh not that they have children they mm. don't uh, come just <laughs> that's interesting yeah <laughs> the crown and they wanted to learn more about the queen when she was a child so well, i think that is of course of course key i mean especially for children who want their uh, parents or adult uh to read the story is is important to appeal to the adult as well because if the content is interesting the image are beautiful uh well of course that uh, awakes the you know the child in 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 uh, in everybody anybody right i think it's a uh, it's another uh awesome uh, aspect of writing a book for for children. Well, it's very exciting that the adults are getting into it. Mm -hmm. And it is historically correct in how we look at Buckingham Palace, how we look at some of the uh, themes that surround the book. And mm -hmm. when we really look at the book and we read what's in it, only adults will really understand some of the things because we've hidden them so well and I won't give away mm. these little nuggets of treasure but adults who know royal history and understand what the queen went through mm. will I see. Know this book is not just for children it's for them as well mm -hmm. yeah that's that's awesome because I think it's that mm, like huh moment right <laughs> it's like oh maybe i have something to learn here so it's like i can take the chance reading this book for my for my uh, child or children to actually learn something i i think it's amazing and and 
<laughs> and uh, so, uh, of course, like we have a lot of questions uh, because I was able to go over the preview of of the book, and and I have to tell it's 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 very exciting. Not only the illustra illustrations are beautiful, uh, the story is uh, w well written, has this uh, fiabeskish. Uh, flavor that I, I, I really love, uh, but again, it's 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 also very um, uh, very on point, and uh, so I definitely want to go over uh, with you uh, through some of the uh, main themes of the book. But as we as we, as we discussed uh, uh, before, uh, this interview is like uh, um, there is something that we have to take out of the table uh, about something that very. Very, uh, very unfair and very un unjustly happen happened to you in the recent years, and uh, of course everybody uh, has Google and uh, they they can they can uh, see for themselves uh, the what uh, the horrible thing that basically you had to go through uh, just because a bunch of media decided to uh, target you. So we don't want to go over that uh, because I uh, because I was shocked to 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 uh, learn from you that you never had the chance to actually tell your side of the story not just your side maybe maybe just speaking the truth because in this case nobody was interested about the truth that that's the sad reality the sad reality of it so again we we don't need to go over the bad stuff because today is about a positive constructive message but it's important that people know that these things should never happen to anybody. And it's also great to see that you were able to, uh, even if that was a, a heavy burden on your shoulder, you were able to brush that off, move forward. And I'm so glad, I'm so happy to see that you didn't waste your talent and you, you kept going and you come up with this beautiful work uh, from which children and uh, adult, adults can learn a lot. So uh, please, just um, uh, uh, you know, if you, uh, I, I want you to uh, feel free to say, you know, uh, what, what, what especially what was unjust and, and unfair about the lies, the lies that were told about you. Well, it's it's really something because when I look back now, I've I've come like a phoenix from the ashes, and mm. I was very shocked with the Wall Street Journal because they came to me for an interview. Hmm. And I worked with them for several weeks and they then came to me several weeks into the process and said, we're changing the direction of the story. And I said, oh, OK, uh, what would it be about? And they're like, oh, small town boy makes big in the world and it will be very positive. We'll put your charities, hmm. your international book award that you won, all of this. Long story short, what people are Googling and seeing is what they put out. And uh, there was a yeah. lot of that I was just an Italian from New York. Well, mm. they completely left out my mother and her family, who were all British, British Irish, British Isles people. Mm. And they made it seem that I duped the world, which for eight years before they even came to me for an interview, I had been working in the European media as an expert on the royal family. And it was shocking the snowball effect and the copy and paste sort of media phenomenon that happened with me i, I was a, a ticker on sky news yeah. channel yeah they made they made fun of the fact that you changed your name and about that you were faking the accent it's like mm -hmm. all kind of lies and nobody in mm -hmm. a time where it's so easy to reach literally anybody you know in any possible form video text voice message Nobody bothered ever to reach out to you and say, even even if they were on this on the side of this story saying, I you know I don't like what what, what you did and uh, I, I I disagree with what you did. So what do you have to tell about I, I, even this? They didn't even bother to do this, right? No, and the thing is, with my name change, people change their names all the time. I mean, for personal reasons, business reasons, but. Changing your name does not diminish your credibility or your resume. All yeah. you need to do is ask well, what a woman. About, what about Hollywood stars? <laughs> what about celebrities? Yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody changes their names. So. Yeah. But I, I never hid that either. In 2013, the London Evening Standard, when I put out my second book, 
uh, they, I had initials JM and they said, what does that stand for? And I said, well, it's my middle name and my surname, which is, is changing. And I said, that's Muscatello. So if the media really did their research, they would have seen that my name change was already happening back in 2013. It was plain right there on the internet. Yeah. So I didn't lie to anyone. Exactly. And, uh, and uh, uh, not only that, but uh, the point is that you focus your, you made your career, your life and your life, your career, you embraced the British heritage of your family and became a, a, a world renowned expert on it. And, uh, and that's why I think was the only thing to tell about your story that you are an expert on specific matters and you embrace that culture. And you identify yeah. with our culture so deeply that you decided to change your name and, and, and uh, educate, school yourself on, on, on those matters. I yes. think this is only noble and, <laughs> and should be praised. That, that's my personal opinion. <laughs> I love my, my father's family, the Italian side of my family. I mean, my grandfather is from Apulia, from Palo de Cole, mm -hmm. just near Bari, and my grandmother is from the north. Uh, but I didn't grow up in an Italian household. We didn't speak Italian. My Italian family will tell you I make the best Irish lasagna they've ever tasted. <laughs> uh, That's uh, truly uh, something. <laughs> so, uh, I, I did take after my mother's side more than my father's. I even took a DNA test with my family and put it on my blog on my website to show people I am of British blood and ancestry as well. And actually, the percentages show that I'm more British than I am Italian. So uh, I wasn't hatched in front of a pizza oven in New York City. <laughs> tell you that truth i apologize for that yeah so this is how simple this was this is what i wanted to show the world this is how simple it was to just figure out what was going on mm. and, and 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 everybody should reflect that you know before judging somebody because this as you say that that, that is the the part that more really hurt me was that of course this not only affected your life but affected the life of your family and the people around you and anybody who did this uh, uh should be ashamed of themselves and this is me of course this is my opinion but uh, because yeah you can do that to people it's unfair and 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 you cannot ignore the consequences and this is one of those despicable example of uh, council culture that cannot have any place in in our society it's, it's, it's just plenty wrong because there is a process especially news where you have to uh, avoid confirmation bias and always seek the truth and the reliability of your sources in this case this is a this is a, a, a handbook of how you do not treat a story <laughs> okay your contribution to <laughs> yeah uh, okay so <laughs> i guess yeah, you have that medal <laughs> i'm pretty sure you would avoid that but it's not your fault it's not your fault and uh... but it, it taught me so much not mm. just about the way the media is going now but it taught me more about myself mm. and it taught me how i needed to say that i know the truth my mm -hmm. family and my friends know the truth. Yeah. And those are the people that mean the most to me. And those that we love and support us, we're always honest with them. And them watching me go through what the world put me through and the hate and the bullying yeah. and the way people just jumped on a bandwagon of syndicated mm -hmm. bullying yeah. through all of these outlets was just fantastic. And I was like, okay, if you want to have a go, that's fine, but it's not going to detour me from doing what I set out to do. Yeah. And that's to educate and defend constitutional monarchy because yeah. so many great things can be learned by the people within that world that set an example for us, like the queen, like Prince Philip, like Prince Charles. And I will never be detoured as the son of an educator with my father and also my mother, who's an educator as well in the health world. I am a born educator, and I feel that to educate people and show them the truth is the most important. So I'm so grateful for you to give me this opportunity to talk about that and say, not always what you read is the truth. There's always another side of that story. 
yeah no absolutely and you deserve uh admiration and respect because you uh you uh, uh you didn't give up uh some other people in a in a different situation in their life without maybe the support you had in the, in terms of family and friends you know uh, uh some people can happen to be in in a, in a bad place in life and that that's yeah. just blatantly wrong and also and so we can you know, uh, uh, gradually move to the uh, bright side of this of this amazing story of yours. Just you know, talking about the British monarchy and America. Uh, you know, there was a thing, you know, a few hundred years ago. But it's always interesting to me to acknowledge that 30 percent of the population of the colony, the colonies, uh, were loyal to the crown throughout the revolution. That is one third of the population of the colonies at that time. One third. It's mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> this means that it wasn't, you know, a monolithic, you know, stand of one That's side against the other. So, to coming to your point, the British monarchy as an institution over the over over the centuries represents something that even here in America, in the most dramatic time of our history at the very, you know, in the cradle and uh, uh, the furnace of building this country. One third of the people were saying, nah, I like the king. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yes, well, as that. <laughs> the thing, because my interest in the British crown, of course, comes from my mother and her family. But mm -hmm. where I grew up in upstate New York, Lake George, mm -hmm. was named after King George II. Yeah. Uh, one third of the revolutionary battles took place around Lake George. We have Crown Point, Fort Edward, Fort Anne. Uh, everything British oh, yeah, is absolutely. in history. So it's not too far-fetched for me to just love British history because it's a part of my family. It's a part of where I grew up. And I think it shaped so much of how America is now. Absolutely. No, that, I'm 100% I'm convinced about that. Uh, also, I can say that because America won the war, but <laughs> but there was a nice post on Facebook few few years ago where uh, because of I think was the you know the uh, 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 George W. Bush era there was this funny uh, post uh, of the Queen basically uh, withdrawing <laughs> the, withdrawing the you know granting the the independence to the country. You know what? I'm taking that back. Which raised to me an interesting legal point because my background is in law. It's like, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, we actually unilaterally <laughs> declare independence. There is a treaty, but technically the queen <laughs> maybe might be might be able to do that from a legal standpoint. So I, I found that that was that was that was very funny. Um, anyway, so to 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 come now to to your book. So of course, um, uh, first thing I want to ask you is uh, what was that inspired you? and made you decide to write a book about uh, Queen Elizabeth's uh, uh, childhood? Well, th this is a great question because I love education and mm. I love teaching people. So with the workshops that I do uh, for not only children, but adults, things keep coming up such as questions that say, well, what about Queen Elizabeth when she was a child? She was never meant to be queen. Her father was never to be king. But that all changed with King Edward VIII. And can you tell us more about her childhood? Mm. And then I look at, at people such as William and Harry and how they grew up. And I said, this is such a great example that people are asking me to outline. And the Queen is such a fantastic woman. She is not just a role model for young girls. Mm. She is a role model for everyone, no matter which age or what age you are. So I said, let's go ahead and create something where we can take the importance of royal history and what constitutional monarchy absolutely is about and what it really means and put it in a little package that can be easily delivered to children. Hmm. Because throughout the world, so many people don't understand constitutional monarchy, especially in America. Yeah. There's still this sort of stigma about the British crown and how bad the king was and oh monarchy is so antiquated but it really does have a purpose in the current century in which we live mm -hmm. so it's about educating young people and showing them something different than really all of the republics that are out there and why just 
that the United Kingdom and the 15 other realms of which the Queen is the Queen are so successful as a family. So hmm. long story sure. short, it's educating young people about the importance of not only the Queen as a person, but the importance of the crown, which is a way of life for so many around the world. Sure. And so I guess, and of course, uh, you are an expert on the topic, but uh, did you have to uh, make any specific research about, uh, about uh, you know, in order to put in together the material for this book? Yeah, of course. We Everything was historically checked. And it's not just because the insider calls me a historian or other outlets. It's because I've taken over 24 years of my life and compiled research to know what I'm talking about. And when we look at the palace today, it's so easy to take a picture and say to Valentina, mm -hmm. can you draw this? Because it won't be accurate. What we see today is not what it was in 1934 when actually yeah. the book takes place. So the ballroom had a different wooden floor. There were different bits of the palace that were used for other things. Uh, it, there's so much that goes into this book, and we oh, actually a part of investigative research in terms of <laughs> in order to make it accurate. Architecturally, we have to find all of that. Uh, how the floor actually looked, what were the patterns, what was the design? When we pull up that red carpet we see today, what would have been there before it was put down in the 1960s? So it was a lot of architectural research because most of the royal research I already knew. But when it came to the actual archives of what the building was, how it was portrayed, and a great example of this is when you read the book and the queen, well, Lilibet, goes into the garden, you see a boathouse. Well, if you were to go into the garden today, you'd say, well, there's no boathouse here. What are you talking about? Well, at that time, she there would was. have exactly what the boathouse mm. was because there was a structure. So mm. it is historically accurate as she goes through the palace and into the gardens. And you can't just say we're going to create this because it wouldn't be true to what actually the real Queen yeah. Elizabeth would have been when she was young. That's great. That's, um, uh, of course, adds another uh, completely uh, uh, another layer to 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 the story and to the uh, inherent uh, interest of of this uh, book. And uh, so uh, uh, the book is for children, as we said. But um, at the same time, uh, you pointed out that it is indeed uh, historically uh, based and uh, uh, yes. and we just uh, go, went over it. So how important do you think it is for this young generation of uh, first born in this full digital world to actually you know educate themselves on 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 history and on you know using a book uh which you know the physical support <laughs> it's really interesting because when we say history today most young people think of that snapchat that disappeared about four hours ago and that's or that's, Wikipedia. Not... that's what it's all about <laughs> and the British monarchy goes back centuries and centuries. It was the founding of the United States. And when we look at royal history, there's so many things that have yet to go online, that have yet to be digitized. Mm -hmm. And I think for young people, the importance of being able to learn how to properly research, to go into these archives, to go into books, to feel them, to smell them, to actually say, when you see some of these manuscripts that are handwritten, and you say, somebody took this, this wow. paper, they took this ink, they took time 350 years ago to let me read now what they put on paper then. And with the Royal Collection, so much is not in the ether. It's, it's not out there. So proper researchers have to go through all of these manuscripts, all of these scrolls, and that is the experience. Anyone can look up anything these days, whether it's true or not, people are able to access it. And trust me, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get to the root of, of proper research, you have to look at everything. And it's not just accepting something you see on a screen, it's doing your own research. It's getting in there and touching this history and living through these scrolls. And I think young people that pick up a book today and discover a world of words that's not coming to life instantly through Snapchat or Instagram stories with little bunny ears and a little yeah. 
using our imaginations, I think young people are starting to lose that with what we're giving them now. But I've wanted to create a real fantasy world for them that a living, breathing human person has actually experienced. Mm. And that's why we wanted to bring the story to light, not just in a in a downloadable Amazon Kindle yes. version, but a proper book that is beautiful to the touch. It smells great. And the pictures are so vibrant, they jump off the page. You are immersing yourself, not just in a fantasy story, but in the fantasy that every young person loves to dream about of being a princess or a prince and being enchanted with crowns and swans and living a royal life that nobody I know mm -hmm. would have even thought possible when we were children. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It's 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 really uh, really fascinating, and I think that this uh, learning experience is is another uh, huge uh, plus of an endeavor like this. Not only because you know it's clear that it doesn't just fall from a tree, but the point is that to uh, uh, um, have children not losing that 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 uh, charm, that fascination about uh, uh, really, it's like being a detective and running an investigation is uh, go find the book, go to your local uh, uh, library, uh, find the book, uh, even if you can start with just images, but then you get to see uh, pictures, illustrations, and, 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 and you have that feeling that you earn it. You, yeah. you, earn, you earn your knowledge and, 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 and you know more uh, than other people around you. That is a feeling that is important to, to preserve and, and, and of course, I think that a, a book like this uh, uh, surely uh, gives a huge contribution uh, um, in, in terms of having uh, kids not losing this uh, this uh, uh, fascination, this this amusement, this this joy about discover. It's true, and and children are growing so fast these days. I, they're I so smart, <laughs> and they're talking to me like they're 15 and I'm like, wait a minute, it's not growing so quickly. But uh, the book was also created. Uh, the 6th of February is so important because unfortunately that's the day that the queen lost her father, but mm. she gained a crown. And this coming accession day, the 6th of February, 2020, will be the 68th year, the 68th anniversary of to the day that she became queen. So. This book, well, not the book so much as it is the entire series, is a way to give tribute to Her Majesty for someone who took the cards she was dealt and played them to the best of her ability, for someone who never wanted this job, who watched this job kill her father, has broken through every record and has made such a phenomenal contribution to not just their country, but to the world. So it's... Yes, for children, yes, for adults, but even more so for the queen. And I really hope that she loves this book. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm sure she will. <laughs> and in, th in talking about uh, royalty, so um, uh, royals were uh, basically the, the only celebrities in, in the past. They, they were, you know, on the mouth of everybody. And uh, nowadays it is drastically uh, different, of course. Um, but how do you think the role and and, uh, and or the image of royals will evolve, especially, uh, you know, in light of the recent uh, uh, Harry and the Meghan uh, controversy. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting but complex question because where Harry and Meghan are at now, it's almost as if history is sort of repeating itself. But it is very similar, but at the same time, very different because Harry is not the crown. He will not be a future king. So there's more leeway and leniency for him and Meghan, whereas William and Catherine would never be allowed to do what Harry and his yeah. wife were able to do. And these are certain factors that I brought up when I was speaking from their wedding at Windsor Castle. And to be royal is very different than to be celebrity, because your celebrity by being royal first. There's a fine, fine line mm. between being royal and being celebrity. And I think this is where the Duchess of Sussex has struggled because she was celebrity first. And you are very rightly said that royal mm. of course, were the first celebrities. I mean, the first international celebrity was the Prince of Wales, the future Edward the 
Edward VIII, and uh, he was loved everywhere. He was one of the first global superstars mm. ever. Yeah. And um, what the royals are going through now, of course, they have their uh, patronages. They have the uh, charities that they champion. But there's a fine way of doing that. And how the Duchess of Cambridge is actually just single-handedly in a very dignified but sort of unmarked way by bringing the royal family to the forefront of the Holocaust memorials uh, that she had undertaken is showing how gifted royals are at what they do. What they do is actually an art because mm -hmm. they're able to use that royal celebrity in such a way that it's not in your face, it's dignified, it's reserved, but just their very presence pushes it to the forefront. And that's the difference between being just a celebrity and a royal celebrity. Yeah, that's an amazing take on uh, on on this uh, topic. Um, absolutely, yeah, um, definitely. There is uh, there is a different uh, weight, uh, of course, uh, in in terms of the role that somebody can uh, can uh, can play, and uh, and of course we cannot ignore that these are kids who grew up in in these times, and uh, and the world has has changed. And but I think that what you pointed out that. In this case, especially for Meghan, she was a celebrity before uh, being a, a, a royal, so that surely played a place. And 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 of course, it was a combination of circumstances and and and, and timing that basically allowed this to to happen. But but we have to remember that there are royals all around the world. It's like uh, uh, it's it's because in the West is less common, but it. There are. If you go to Africa or or, or Asia, the, the, it's it's actually the <laughs> the, the the common status for, for for many for many countries. So it is something that um, uh, again we shouldn't just dismiss it. Like ah, uh, you know, it's a relic from the past. Um, it's uh, now yeah. the present is all of this. And when you look at Western Europe and you see how many monarchies there are and how deep of a role they play in the national story of each country. If we look anywhere from Monaco to Sweden to Spain, of course, the Netherlands, Norway, Liechtenstein, there's yeah. so many countries where life revolves around the royal family because they are the heart and soul of the nation and stewards of that history. Yeah, It's very important. And, it, it, you know, in these days, you can call it excellent networking <laughs> if you're connected to some royal that can guarantee that that, that is quality networking <laughs> so there is always a value to that <laughs> um, in Italy, i mean uh, we know what happened in italy and it is unfortunate it doesn't have its monarchy because this tour that I've undertaken, I'm constantly being reminded of Italy's royal past. And I was at the Palazzo Pitti in Firenze just the other day and looking at how rich that building is and with the unification in Vittorio Emanuele. And it's everywhere here in Roma, in Florence, in Venice. And when you look at the royal story of this country, you say it's just fantastic history, but I really do hope the movement does gain more traction here because I think Italy could really be well served by having its royal house reinstated. Well, yeah, of, of course it was it was extremely controversial at that time because they held this referendum and it was highly questioned at that time. A lot of people say that the, the monarchy actually won the monarchies, but it was the... Uh, the contingency, it was because it wasn't in the Allies' interest of having a king, that the reputation was bad because what happened with Mussolini. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's highly controversial, but it's undeniable mm. that half of the population at least was still loyal to the king, and there are a lot of, there are many nostalgics uh, still <laughs> these days. And, uh, and, and, and and you know, and in history, you know, you, you never know. But I think it's it's part it's part of the past, uh, uh, and and so it's part it's part also of the, of your heritage. So it is part also of your future because, as you know, the the old saying uh, goes, you know, if you 
really want to know where you know where you're going you need to know where you came from so you cannot ignore that and in in this regard uh, uh you are basically now uh, touring in in italy uh, with a superstar in the in the in the field right with stella and uh, this very talented i have to say illustrator uh valentina really did an amazing job serving uh the details of this story uh giving this uh, again uh uh um, uh, this, this this tone that is in between because you know as Americans we know to make association you know so it's a little bit this uh, Alice in Wonderland flavor uh, with uh, something of uh, Anastasia from you know the, uh, the 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 Tsar in uh, in in Russia but is 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 little Elizabeth that that's her that's her when she was a little girl uh, so um, how how did you you know how did you meet uh, Stella and uh, Valentina, and uh, what, what brought you together, guys? Well, Stella and I go back years and years from when uh, we both actually moved to England, or were in London, and it was fantastic. We met at one of my organization's events. It was at Buckingham Palace, and the rest is history. We just became really great friends, and with her being from Italy, of course, I had to tell her about my family and my grandparents from Italy. And we just have remained so close. Even after she left left London, we just spoke probably every other week and stayed in touch. And she actually phoned me back in 2019. And I remember the day. She said, Thomas, uh, great book you've just put out. Fantastic. But why don't you write another one? I said, Stella, I just wrote this book. She goes, no, 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 no. And not one of your boring biography books. I want you to write something fun and educational. I said, Stella, I write educational. She goes, ah, but it would be the person who's reading who decides whether it's fun or not. And I said, <laughs> that's about? About like Italian attitude right there. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, so what are you thinking? She goes, well, I work with children. Why don't we join forces? You know the history. You write well. Uh, I have this great illustrator who's done all of Sebastian's Chronicles for me. Uh, I'd like to write a book with you. Um, why don't we write? You, you take this away. Think about what it is you want to write and about whom. Come back to me. And I did. I said, let's do it about little Queen Elizabeth when she was a child. And Stella said, that's fantastic. If you write it, I'll take it from your speak into my children's speak, and we won't lose anything in the translation. I said, fantastic. So I said, now, you said you have this fantastic illustrator. I've seen what she's done, but can she capture what Buckingham Palace is? Can she capture the fantasy we want to create in a historic aspect? And Stella said, I'm sure she will be able to. Uh, her English is very good, but not as good as mine. So I might have to translate a little bit. And what you see with the book is the product we've, we've created. And it was a fantastic process. Yes, translations, because my Italian is ciao, arrivederci, and <laughs> that's it. Quanto costa? How much it is? <laughs> Very important. <laughs> yeah. so, um, you know, joking aside, it was a little trying. Uh, it was a little difficult with that language barrier. But being able to do the research and send everything to uh, Valentina and watch her illustrate it and have her send me proofs to ask if the detail was right. How should this person's hair be? It's a black and white photograph. What would be the color that we should be using? Uh, she was fantastic wanting to actually get the historical representation of what we were doing correct. And with the difficulty of black and white photographs, I had to seek out other sources. I had to talk to other people uh, very close to the palace to get some answers for that. So again, that's a little more research for the book. 
But something that's very important that a lot of adults will understand is when in the book, Lilibet goes into the long gallery where she sees all these beautiful canalettos and a lot of Italian works. But she talks to this one prince and the prince is in a sailor suit. And this photograph is very famous if you know the royal family because it's of Prince John, who would be the queen's uncle who she never met because he died in 1919. So when we wrote this book, it was the 100th year anniversary of the death of Prince John, who was the youngest of George V and Queen Mary's children. So as Queen Elizabeth went to the palace to visit, in the book, her grandparents, George V and Queen Mary, we thought it was a nice tribute to him. But Stella, and Valentina didn't know anything about him because it's a story that unless you were in the know about the royal family, you'd have no idea. So I was instructing and teaching at the same time we were creating. <laughs> and of course it was a black and white photograph. So I had to say to Valentina, now it's going to be a traditional British sailor's uniform. What, what? <laughs> so I, and then she was, Tom, do me a favor put it on an email, go away, bye, bye, and come back when you have something I can understand. And <laughs> it's the experience actually doing this book. And we're so excited to progress and do the next book and the next after that to create this fantastic series of Little Queen Lilibet and her adventures. <laughs> yeah, that sounds amazing. Considering that uh, when you look at the actual, the, the outcome and uh, the... Uh, again, the, the the quality and the grace of these uh, works, it's it's really something that is uh, touching. I, I found that uh, especially the 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 expression on the face of little um, uh, Elizabeth are particularly, uh, uh, you know, uh, touching. You you really see, uh, you know, the innocence, you know, of, of that age, thinking about what that woman, uh, you know, will have to face in her life and that was a time in her age when she was still again innocent uh, and, and 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 you know uh, just <laughs> living the you know the, the bright side uh, of the life and uh, that is really amazing i, I strongly really recommend uh, everybody to uh, check this uh, work because uh, it's it's really amazing and now we know even more that the uh, accuracy is is actually gives a whole brings the the work to uh, a completely uh, 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 new level, and um, yeah. So about this, for sure, uh, the 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 book the book is uh, is the way to go. I uh, sh shortly will be also featured here in in English and distributed also here in in uh, in America, right? Yes, the Anglosphere, uh, of mm -hmm. course, America, which is a very big market, but also Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and of course, the United Kingdom. So Great. I'm really excited for it to make its way to America because I would love nothing more than to share this with my country of my birth and of say, course. you know what, I I was born here, but I'm bringing a lot of history back. I've I've been around the world. I've done what I've done, and I'm ready to just share the fantastic abilities America has given me to garner all of its education, and I. I really hope America is proud of what I've done coming from where I've come from. Absolutely. Well, and also Canada, right? Canada is, mm -hmm. is, is another, uh, because I happen to go there pretty, pretty often with my, uh, because of my job and, uh, oh yeah, over there is, 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 is still really big. <laughs> it's fascinating mm -hmm. to go to <laughs> Toronto, especially. Yeah. There is a, a, a deep connection. There is a deep feeling about, about the monarchy and uh, again over there has been embraced as a part of the legacy uh, as part of yeah. the heritage so you really are so it's a it's a very special monarchy and another one of those special countries that loves its crown dearly but doesn't always has have its its monarch or its mm -hmm. royal family there but harry and Meghan are changing that for the canadians yeah. very much so <laughs> 
So you are full of um, uh, energy and uh, and creativity. Um, uh, of course, now you are focusing on this endeavor. Uh, the, soon there's going to be the release of the book, uh, the the English version. Uh, but um, anything that it's uh, boiling, <laughs> anything you, anything else you would like to share with us? Well, maybe a few secrets. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm always doing something. Uh, all of my friends they don't understand how I have so much energy, but. History and royalty excites me, so I am looking at going back to my roots, mm -hmm. uh, starting in Lake George and doing a few different documentaries about the area and how it uh, sparked a global education and a change and shift in global power, starting from Lake George. So a few different documentaries in the works, okay. uh, a few things with one of my friends, uh, uh, Prince Mario Max of Schoenberg Lipa. He's in California right now. So we're talking on a few points of interest, maybe something in the reality genre. Uh -huh. And we have 2022, which is the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Yeah. So you'll probably see a few more books and fun books of foodies and cocktails and pure mm -hmm. celebration and fun coming from me, in addition to more of the adventures of Little Queen Lilibet. Mm -hmm. Watch this <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 um, for me, it was exciting to find out about your, um, your book about the li liqueurs and spirits, uh, because I'm, I'm a, I am a mixologist myself. Uh, you know, I paid for my law school uh, working as a, as a mixologist, and uh, that is always, uh, you know, for me, it, you know, it's part of the, you know, the early, you know, um, years when I was out there as an adult making my own money, uh, and it was fun. It was fun to find out about it, and I'm curious about, you know, reading reading about that uh, as well. So, it, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me? Do you have the book, Their Majesty's Mixers, where yes. they reign their yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you a copy. It won the Gourmand Award in 2018. I'll give you one. <laughs> Thank you, absolutely. Yep, and, uh, may, you know, hopefully we're going to have the chance soon to, uh, you know, share some of this knowledge <laughs> about spirits and uh, liqueurs. And... Uh, uh, <laughs> knowledge is power. Exactly. <laughs> and also fun when it comes to liqueur. <laughs> Uh, Thomas, I, I can't say um, uh, you know enough how uh, how grateful I am uh, for this opportunity, uh, for uh, uh, you know sharing your time with us and and uh, uh, the uh, the uh, you know what happened uh, you know behind the curtains of this uh, amazing uh, piece of work, and uh, thank you for uh, this endeavor and uh, uh, good luck with everything. I'm pretty sure that you gonna keep rising. I will. Grazie. Buonasera. Ciao. Ciao.